After working with thousands of entrepreneurs, course creators, program creators, and service providers across the world, I've realized something about messaging. Messaging is more than just knowing the perfect pattern, the perfect framework, the perfect content process. There's something else deeper going on. There's two elements, two invisible elements that we started to realize that the students who crushed it with their messaging had that the others didn't. And what I'm going to do in this episode is bring both of those into your awareness and dissect why both of those can help transform your messaging. So if you're ready, well, keep on listening. Hi, I'm Brandon Lucero, and you're about to experience the new way to thrive in business, entrepreneurship, and life by leaning into who you are, what you love, and standing up for what you want to create. Get ready because this is where we go against the grain, say no to outdated society norms, and we say yes to change in order to create a happier, more fulfilled world. Welcome to the New Generation Entrepreneur Podcast. Hello and welcome back to another episode of the New Generation Entrepreneur Podcast. Today is an episode around messaging, but we're going to take a different direction with messaging today. Now, if you are a video Forex student or a uh, mentor, mentee inside of our mentorship program, then you likely have heard these concepts before because we just finished up our video Forex live event um, a week ago. So, well, a week ago from when we're recording this episode, I don't know if it's a week, week ago from when you're listening to this episode, but we made an announcement, which I'm going to reveal to you guys right now on the podcast, which is we are um, killing off or ending the video Forex effect. And before everyone starts freaking out, oh my God, I wanted to buy the program. I wanted to get in at some point. I wanted to work with you guys. Don't worry, we're not going anywhere. We're still continuing with messaging. We're still continuing uh, the podcast. But um, the video Forex program started out three years ago as a program that helped people fix video inside of their business. And it no longer is just about video. It has evolved to messaging, to communication, to content. And it, we've, we've helped people write better ads, um, create better content, whether that's in the form of video or podcast or image ads on Instagram um, or a webinar. And we've helped people create better webinars, better video series. The program has evolved to something that is really about messaging. It's about standing out. It's about creating demand. Um, it, it's about communication. And we're leaning into that. And so with the name Video Forex Effect, it makes it sound like it's all about video, where video has become a small element of, the, uh, of what we actually do instead of the core or the nucleus. So we're moving the name to something else and we are evolving the program to something even deeper. So it's still gonna be around messaging. It's still gonna be around the same things we've been doing and teaching and talking about, but I'm bringing it to a new depth. And a couple reasons as to why. Um, I think for the longest time, or not, I don't think, I know, for the longest time, uh, well, actually, let me start here. Let me, let me go back a little bit farther. I didn't actually realize that messaging was our thing, was the thing that I was really good at until about a year and a half to two years ago. And so within that year and a half to two years, we've leaned into, hey, messaging is really why people are coming to us. Let's lean into that. And ever since we've done that, we've just been growing more and more, bigger launches, more people coming to us, more downloads on the podcast. And I didn't realize that was our thing until a year and a half to two years ago. Once I realized that, I focused on my craft. I focused on evolving what it was that I did, who I thought I was, what our team was, what our program was. And I focused more on looking at what I do as my work and as my craft. And as we worked with hundreds and hundreds of students, in fact, we just crossed our thousandth um, Video Forex member uh, back in August. So as I work with more and more people, I get to see more and more of what's working, what's not working. Why do some people see results? Why did some people not see results? And I've been able to narrow down the, the secret sauce to a couple things. And so for the longest time, 
where we focus a lot with our messaging is we focus a lot on what I call the masculine energy. So we focus a lot on, here's a framework, here's a communication pattern, here's a process, go follow the process. Here are the things that you have to go do. Here's the action that you have to go take. And so for the longest time, we've been focusing a lot on here's the communication patterns, here's some exercises, here's all the action-based masculine energy things that you need to go do in order for your messaging to be effective. And so as we worked with more and more students, we started to realize the people that really, really soared to the top, and we've had some amazing people come through the, the program, like Bob Helig, for example, came into the mentorship program. He was stuck at $2 million a year, and then With the new messaging, we've unlocked all of this, what I call feminine energy. He's now doing $4 million a year within, you know, 12 months of going through the program. We've had people like Rose, who's been on the podcast, who's, who's started doing like hundred, hundred thousand dollar plus months, six months after going through the program. We started looking at, okay, they all have the same patterns. They all have the same exercises. Why are some people able to have these amazing results while some take a little bit longer to get there. And I do believe the way the program is structured is that anyone, anyone and everyone who goes through the program will see results because we take the masculine and and blend it with the feminine energy. And that's what we're leaning into more. And here's what I mean by this is, is that I can give you all the patterns and all the frameworks in the world, but what you fill up those patterns with, what you fill up those exercises with is what matters most. And the people that understood that feminine energy side, like remembering who you are, what you really want to say, shutting off the external world, not operating in fear, really understanding who you are and who you serve, like these invisible elements. And there's also mastery involved in this. Who has a better mastery over their craft? Those were the people that started to see faster and bigger and better results with the video forex effect. And so that's where we're evolving to is, is embracing the feminine side with the masculine side. So we're going to be growing the masculine side. We're coming up with more frameworks, more uh, content types, more patterns, um, better exercises, but we're also developing a process to unleash and unlock that feminine energy inside of all of our students so that you can fill up those, those uh, patterns and everything else, the masculine uh, stuff up with things that are more powerful. And when you look at the top thought leaders, the top people out there in any space, they are the ones who are embracing who they are. They are remembering who they are. They're saying what they want to say. They're being who they want to be. Look at Mel Robbins, Tony Robbins, the holistic psychologist, um, all you know, anyone who's who's a major thought leader. They have accurately, or I don't even know accurate is the right word, but they have um, efficiently shed the external world. Remember who they are. They've leaned into their craft. They have mastery over their craft. They're not controlled by the external world, and then they fit all of that into patterns. So they're communicating the way humans process information. They're communicating the way subconscious processes information. And once we realized that, I was like, okay, great. We need to evolve. We need to change. We need to add on to what we're doing and we need to move away from this being about video because it's not about video. This is about messaging and video is just one way we can get the message out, but we're going to start talking more and moving the program to be more about messaging as a whole and then giving you those frameworks, those patterns, those communication styles for any mode that you want to use, uh, whether that is a podcast or a webinar or a video series or an ad uh, or a video or whatever it is, blog post, whatever it is. And that's the direction. And this is a, those are the secret ingredients is, is evolution and mastery. So the people that have seen the best results and have the best messaging have embraced these invisible elements that I call evolution and mastery. Those are the keys to messaging, content, and purpose. And to give you an example of how this works, I actually want to tell you the story of Netflix. I want to tell you about the evolution of Netflix. Because if you remember, 
eight years ago or whenever it was, 10 years ago, when Netflix started, they started with a failing business model. They started with a model that did not work. However, they didn't realize that it was a failing business model. And this is a quote directly from one of the co-founders of Netflix. They had no idea that they had entered into a business model that didn't work. So they went out and they started doing these DVDs and renting the DVDs out. And uh, their whole unique angle was that they there's no late fees. You can just pay a monthly fee and get as many DVDs back and forth that, that you want. But the point I'm trying to make here is they couldn't see everything. On paper, it looked like a great business model. It looked like it was something that worked. So they went and they did it. They tried it. They got the knowing. They moved from idea to knowing. They moved from knowledge to knowing. So they started putting it out there. And then at, within any business, you know, just with any business, there's going to be expenses. There's going to be roadblocks. There's going to be things that pop up that you just weren't aware of. You didn't know. You have to go through the process in order to learn and, and to grow. And there are a lot of you listeners out there right now, and maybe it's you, maybe it's not, but there's a lot of you out there who are trying to get things exactly perfect before you move forward. My message needs to be perfect. My business needs to be perfect. Whatever X, Y, and Z needs to be perfect before I can take the step. But the problem is, is no matter how perfect you get it, it's never going to be the best that it should be, can be. It's never going to be the most effective that it can be or, or should be because you have to learn. You have to go get the experience. You have to start focusing on mastery over your craft. Because the thing with mastery that people don't understand is when you have mastery over your craft, you are literally discovering things that other people haven't discovered yet. You're creating new patterns. You're creating new frameworks. You're coming up with new ideas. You're connecting new dots. And when you discover things that other people haven't discovered yet, you can teach things that other people haven't taught yet. When I look at what we do with messaging, I haven't seen people teach the same things that we teach. There might be some overlap here and there. But because I've been focusing on a mastery of my craft, I'm able to discover things that other people haven't discovered yet, which allows me to teach things that others haven't taught yet, which puts me into my own space. It makes me a thought leader within my niche. And so let's bring, if we bring this back to Netflix, Netflix moved into a failing business model, but because they had a failing business model, it allowed them to discover a better model. It allowed them to come to the table and go, great, that didn't work. Here's our new foundation of where we're at. We actually have a huge customer base. Uh, we do have investment money here, sitting here. We know this model doesn't work. What other options can we have? And they created the streaming model. To me, they had a mastery over the craft. They were creating something that didn't exist yet. It wasn't a thing. It wasn't a norm. The thing is, is that you, what I want you to realize is that they could have never come up with the streaming model had they not gone through the broken model of the DVD. If they sat around thinking, what's the perfect model for movies, they likely would have never landed on streaming model. In fact, they probably did sit around and they landed on the DVD model because that's what was popular at the time. But because they had that experience, that knowing of, um, of movies, of, of what works and what doesn't work, and that this is a broken business model, they can evolve to something else. And they evolved to the streaming model. To me, they had achieved mastery. They had mastery over their craft. They had mastery over their industry and their niche. And like I said earlier, or a few minutes ago, when you have mastery, you're discovering things that other people haven't discovered, which means you can teach or do things that people haven't taught or done before. But the thing with mastery is that it will disappear eventually. And so I think a lot of people will have mastery over their industry or their space or their craft, and then they get lazy or complacent or just think it's going to last forever, and it doesn't. You know, we can look at like Blockbuster, for example. They literally had mastery over the DVD rental business. Like they had systems that people didn't have. They had marketing that people didn't have. They had communication that people didn't have. They had um, so many different things like store, even the store layout and the way they had 
products placed to like so that you would buy things on your way out. Like they had mastery over the art of DVD rental space. But because they had invented it and created it and mastered it, other people can look at what they're doing and then replicate it or disrupt it. And that's exactly what happened. And that's actually what happened with Netflix as well. Netflix achieved mastery and they created the streaming model. And they're the only ones with the streaming model, but then all of a sudden came Hulu and Disney Plus and Apple TV and Prime Video. And now Netflix was just one in a sea of many. But then they struck, they struck again. So they started to realize, okay, now that we have mastery over the streaming model, we've created the streaming model. They didn't just stop there. Because the streaming model was now their new foundation, the streaming model was their new level of thinking. This is where they could think from. Because I always tell people, you can only think from a place you already know. They knew the streaming model. It had been created. It was their new foundation. It was new, their new level to think from. So they started to realize, okay, well, we have issues with licensing. We have issues with, you know, studios coming in saying, okay, we're not going to come to a deal. We're going to pull our content here. Or like, um, I said, I don't know if it's NBC or ABC, but they, they pulled the office so that they could put it on their platform, which is called Peacock. So they had, they had problems with distribution. So what did Netflix do? Well, they started creating Netflix originals. Mastery struck again. And now they had complete control over uh, the movies and the programs and the TV shows that were on their platform. In fact, I just went to the movies yesterday. I uh, saw 007, the last James Bond movie. And there was a preview for a movie and it was a Netflix produced movie. And it's going to be shown in the big screens. I was like, well, that's just, that's just crazy to me that this DVD, this business that started off as a DVD rental business has evolved to becoming a studio, essentially, with their own platform to distribute their movies, but they're also now distributing it through, you know, the traditional ways as well, through the movie theaters. And I was like, blew my mind. To me, that's, that's mastery. But the point I'm making is when they started, whenever it was, 10 years ago or, or whenever, as a DVD rental business, they had no idea where they were going to land. They didn't know that they were going to turn out to be a studio producing their own movies, producing their own shows. They didn't know that they were going to lead the, the, the space in uh, streaming. They couldn't see step three until they're on step two, and they couldn't see step five until they're on step four. And right now, you have no idea where you're going to go. I promise you that you, whatever you start with, will not be what you end with. I promise you that. And when I look back at, at my journey, that has been totally true. And this is a huge part of messaging is you have to let the evolution work its magic. Because I think in order to have mastery, in order to have this deeper level of understanding and, and communication, you also have to be aligned with your dharma, your purpose. You have to be in alignment with what you're here to do on this planet because it allows you to see things that others can't see. And when we stop our progress, when we wait for perfection or things to get perfect, it actually, not only does it hurt your business growth, but it hurts your messaging because you're not learning, you're not uncovering, you're not focusing on a mastery of your craft. When you have a mastery of your craft, you just know how to communicate it differently. The reason why I can get so specific in my copy and in my communication with you is because I know exactly what you're thinking. I literally can describe what you are doing to cause a problem. I can literally describe what you're doing to try to fix a problem because I have a level of understanding of my space, of the people that I help because of I focus on mastery of my craft. I let things evolve. But the thing is, is, you know, Netflix was able to see things that others couldn't see because they made more progress. They focus on a mastery of their craft. They didn't wait for perfectionism. So, you might be asking, okay, Brian, I get the whole Netflix thing, but how does this relate to courses and programs? Well, when I was putting together our opening presentation for the Video Forex live event, uh, I went to my wife and I asked her, I'm like, you know, because my wife and I have been dating since um, I was 16 and she was 15. I'm now 38, so 21 years or 
is it 22 years now, I guess. And English was my worst subject in school. A lot of people don't know this. Math was actually my, my strongest, and it still is. Like math is, I'm very strong at math. I can do math pretty much in my head. Not crazy complicated things, but stuff that people would normally need a calculator for, I can do some of that stuff in my head. It just clicks. I just, I don't know why. I just get, I, math makes sense to me. Uh, English, not so much. And so English was my wife's favorite subject. And when I was creating this presentation, I asked her, I'm like, doesn't it blow your mind a little bit that I get paid to write scripts for people? Like I get paid $10,000 a day to like write scripts. That just sounded a little crazy. I'm like, would you have gone to me for like script writing back in high school? And she's like, yeah, no. Like when I met you, you were not a great writer. She's like, I would not have gone to you for, <laughs> for that. But then fast forward today, 2021, I get paid $10,000 a day to write. And I have zero education on English writing or grammar outside of high school. No formal education. And if you would have told me like, hey, this is what you're here to do. This is what you're going to get paid to do. Like messaging and communication. I'd be like, no, you're, you're crazy. But what I've always done over the last couple of years is I focus on evolution and I focus on a mastery of my craft. I focus on gaining more knowing faster than everyone else. In 2008, I was working for my dad and, um, you know, that company eventually went under and I was on my own and I started my own company in around, around 2011. And I started with what I, what I knew. I started doing real estate videos for, for agents. I started selling, um, you know, like listing videos because that's what we did at my dad's company. It's like, Oh, I can do this on my own. And so I did it and I launched it and I realized that, you know, like real estate agents generally don't have a lot of money or, one per, it's actually 1%, I think it's 1% of agents are actually the ones that make like 90% of the revenue or something like that. Something crazy like that. That's not an accurate stat, but it's something like that. And so I realized a lot of them aren't willing to spend money on, on listing videos and I just didn't know how to sell back then. So what I started to do is rank those videos. I thought, well, maybe if I can get a video ranked for, you know, things like homes for sale in Thousand Oaks, like they would pay me for the ranking. Back in 2008, I was ranking a bunch of websites, learning how to make money online. So I took that knowledge from 2008, applied it to videos in 2011 and 12, and YouTube videos started ranking really high. And then my company at the time sold with video, did real estate videos, automotive videos, business videos, and a ranking service. So we'd rank the videos. I didn't sell a single video, and I think I sold two or three of the SEO packages. But right around the same time is when there was another guy teaching video SEO and he was partners with Lewis Howes and that was James Wedmore. So James and I were competing uh, with ranking our videos amongst each other, but he was selling a course and I was selling a service. And so what I eventually did with my wife giving me the push is I emailed James, uh, or no, sorry, a Facebook message, James Wedmore. And I just said, hey, we're both ranking and doing all this stuff. Like I've learned some really cool things, love to meet for coffee. And I got no response for 30 days. And then one day he messages me and says, hey, let's meet for coffee. Love to meet up and, and chat. I didn't know this, but his assistant at the time had got the message, looked me up and was like, hey, you really need to meet this guy. And so we met, we met at Starbucks and we just chatted for a couple hours, like until Starbucks closed. We were just talking SEO and ranking and all this stuff. And we, we really hit it off. And he said something to me, which I'll tell you what he said here in a minute, but he said something that really changed the trajectory of my life. That was 2012. In 2013, uh, I started selling my own SEO course and I was doing webinars and stuff like that to try to sell my YouTube ranking course, my video SEO course. And I get an email after one of my webinars from a guy and it says, that was one of the worst webinars I had ever seen, but I want to help you. Let me help you. I'm going to help you for free. And that person was Jim Fortin. Back then, Jim was a sales coach, but he was working for real estate agents. So back in 2013, he was going flying around the country, going from brokerage to brokerage to brokerage. And he was doing presentations to their agents on how to sell better, pitching a $1,500 group coaching program, which has now become TCP. And that was back in 2013. So that was like eight years ago. And... Right around the same time, 
my first son was born and my wife said, you basically need to make this business work within the next six months because I don't want to go back to work. I want to stay home with our kids that you've been working on this thing for two or three years. And this was the deal we made is I want to be a stay at home mom and you can run the business. And I said, okay. Now, when I met James back in 2012, he told me, Hey, look, I'm teaching SEO stuff. I'm not offering as a service, but I get so many people asking me, how do you sell this as a service? If you can make $10,000 a month selling the video SEO service and videos to businesses, we can create a course and sell this thing. And he said, here's the, here's what you need to do. Here's the business model I want. I want you to sell videos for at least a thousand bucks. And then I want you to have a reoccurring of like 200 bucks a month to keep the videos ranked. If you can make that model work, then we can partner on this product and sell it to my audience and your audience. I said, great, sounds good. So I got to work and within six months, I was doing $14,000 a month uh, making videos for businesses and ranking their, their videos and, and all of that stuff. And then James and I partnered on a program called Local Video Academy in 2014. Now I did Local Video Academy for about three years. Uh, it did really well, it was a great product. I was also running my agency on the side, so money was starting to come in. But the reason why I go through this story is if we look back at 2008, I was just some kid working a job, working my dad's company, learning about how to make money online, learning SEO, which led me to ranking videos, which led me to meeting James, which led me to creating the course, which led me to um, learning how to launch and sell courses. And that leads me to 2017. That was a nine-year journey for me. A nine-year journey. I had no idea where that was going to take me. I just let the involvement happen. But at every single step of the way, I focused on a mastery of my craft at that time. When I was ranking videos, I had a mastery of the craft. Trial and error, attempting, pushing things out there. And what did that do? That allowed me to communicate it deeper than everyone else. It allowed me to teach it better than everyone else. Then it led me to offering it as a service, which led me uh, to mastering the art of selling to local businesses, which led me to learning how to launch and sell programs. But something happened in 2017, which was I didn't enjoy what I was doing anymore. I didn't enjoy teaching local marketing. I didn't enjoy teaching YouTube. I didn't enjoy, enjoy teaching Facebook ads anymore. So what did I do? I evolved again. I blew up the company. I gave it up. I was doing $500,000 a year and I gave it up because I didn't enjoy it. I was ready for another evolvement. And that's when I created the Video Forex Effect. Then I did the Video Forex Effect for about a year and a half, teaching people how to fix video inside their business. And then that led me to the present day where I started to finally understand that messaging was the thing that I was good at. I didn't know where I was going to end up. What I started with isn't what I have today. And what I have today isn't going to be what I have in five years from now. But there's so many of you who are stopping the process of evolvement because of perfectionism, because of fear, because of worry. And ironically, you want to get things perfect before you move forward. But the lack of moving forward is what's stopping the results inside of your business. You think perfectionism or getting things just right is going to bring you more revenue when all it's doing is stopping you from the thing that actually is going to generate more revenue. It's going to stop the learning. It's going to stop the mastery. Mastery to me, it's a couple of things. It's more than just experience. What experience to me does, experience teaches you mistakes. It teaches you pain points. It teaches you suffering. But just because you have experience doing something, it doesn't mean that you, ha you have experience in solving the problem. Mastery does that. To me, experience means that you've learned all the ways to fail. You've learned all the struggle. You've learned all the pain points. Mastery to me means you know how to solve the problem, but not just, not you haven't just solved it once. You solved it 10,000 times. You understand how to fix the problem deeper than anyone else. Mastery can't be faked. And in order to get to mastery, it all everything starts with content. To have great content, we need great messaging. To have great messaging, we need mastery over our craft. In order to have mastery over our craft, we have to remember who we are. You have to remember who you are before the external world told you who you are. You have to be in complete alignment. For example, 
if I was like, cool, I'm going to be a soccer expert and I'm going to go get mastery over my craft. I, I'm not, my alignment, my dharma is, my purpose is not to go play soccer. I could put in 10,000 hours and play soccer and I will be a better soccer player. But the person who can see the game better than I can, who can see it differently than I, whose purpose is to be a soccer player, they will always have a deeper level of mastery than me. And sometimes we get stuck in our business or stuck doing something that we don't want to do because we think that is what I'm supposed to do. That's what makes the money. I can't leave now. And what that really does is, is stop you from achieving mastery. If you want mastery, you have to be in your purpose and alignment and dharma, which means you have to remember who you are. When you remember who you are, you can see your space differently. Everything flows. Mastery goes, uh, happens a lot easier. You go a lot deeper with it, which gives you better messaging, which ultimately gives you better content. Okay. So, uh, I'm going to give you an example of how this, this works. Um, if you were stuck in a cave and you know, like, uh, sorry, let's put this, not a cave, like you fell in a hole, right? You're at the bottom of this hole and you're looking up and you can see the top of it, but it's like a hundred feet up and there's two people up here and, and person number one says, Hey, I'm going to help you get out of this cave, this hole. So what I want you to do is I want you to climb. I want you to climb up this hole. Okay. There's gonna be certain areas where you're gonna have to grip harder than others. There's gonna be certain areas that, um, you know, like where you're gonna have to use your legs more than your arms. There's gonna be certain areas where the deuce, the, the dirt is a little loose. So just be very careful, but I believe in you and you can do it. I know you can, you can do this. That's person number one. And then person number two came over and person number two said, okay, here's what I need you to do. I need you to walk to the north facing wall and I want you to put your left hand on the rock that is shaped like a U. Put your hand on there, your left hand there, and then put your right hand, your right foot on the rock that's jetting out about three inches. And you're going to push yourself up with your leg and then pull yourself up with your hand. And then you're going to move over five feet sideways to the right. And then you're going to grab the two rocks that you can see sticking out there. And you're going to grab those. You're going to use, pull you, pull yourself up with your hands. And then what you're going to do is when you do that is you're going to reach over and you're going to see a root sticking out of the wall. Okay, you're going to grab onto that root and you're going to swing yourself over three more feet to the right and you're going to grab onto uh, a little cliff right there. You're going to put your feet down on a little cliff and then you're going to start climbing up from there. Now, after 10 feet, the dirt's going to turn a little sandy, so be careful. But because it's sandy, you can actually dig holes into the wall and use those as steps. By now, by this point, you're going to be close enough to the top and you can just pull yourself up uh, and, and climb out. Like, which person are you going to listen to? One or two, you're going to listen to person number two. Why are you going to listen to person number two? Because they described what you need to do so specifically and so detailed that your subconscious mind automatically goes, this person has done this before. They know the answer, but they did nothing more than communicate a solution to you deeper than the other person, more specifically than the other person. But the only reason they could get more specific was because they had mastery over it. They've done it before. And they probably haven't done it once. They've probably done it multiple times. That's the same thing with your course, with your program, with your marketing. If you're not willing to go get mastery, then you're always going to be victim to the people who have it. You're always going to be struggling to compete with the people with mastery. And if you don't have mastery over your craft right now, that's fine. Go and get it. That should be your focus because look, you can build a business without mastery. There's a lot of people who don't have mastery over the craft that are doing really well, but I'm promising you this, that if you focus getting the mastery over your craft, it's going to help you communicate better. It's going to give you deeper messaging. It's going to give you more effective content. It's going to help you become and create a better program that gets people more results because you have found the solution hundreds of times more than once. You understand, not only do you understand the problems and the pain points, but you understand the solution better than everyone else. You can communicate it differently. So with that being said, we're going to do a follow-up episode. And I'm going to talk about how to get specific inside of your content, why it's so important, why that is absolutely necessary. So they'll be on next week's episode. But the thing that I want you to take away from this episode right now, before we wrap up and end it, is that if you want effective messaging, 
Number one, you have to embrace evolution and understand what you start with won't be what you end with, but you do need to get started started in order to get there. You never know where things are going to take you, so stop acting like you know where you want to go and just let whatever's going to unfold, just let it unfold. Let the journey take you to where you need to go. Number two, when you are creating your marketing or a business, focus on a mastery of your craft. It'll give you a better product. It'll give you a better program. It'll make you a better teacher or mentor. But most importantly, it will allow you to go to deeper levels inside of your messaging than no one else, than anyone else can go. No one else will be able to match your communication, your messaging, if you have a deeper level of mastery over them. I promise you that. So for those of you who have not left us a review on iTunes, please head over to iTunes, leave us a review. I'd be so grateful for that. I always love reading them and seeing the impact that we have on you guys. And I always love it when you leave us a review and just let us know what you liked about the podcast so I can do more of it. So head over there, let us know, and tune in next week because we're going to talk about how to get more specific inside of your content. So I'll see you on the next one. Hey guys, thank you so much for checking out another episode of the New Generation Entrepreneur Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, go below, hit the subscribe button, and make sure you click on that bell icon and get notified every time we drop a new episode. Now, if you're looking for the show notes, we have them linked underneath this video, as well as our social media handles and some links to free training and offers that we drop from time to time to help you guys even further. So go check those out if you're interested, and thank you so much for tuning in to the New Generation Entrepreneur Podcast.